I will not miss the opportunity for all the world to share another pescatarian recipe with you all. So here I am again, friends and family. Welcome to the Navas Kitchen. I hope you all are doing absolutely great. I got my hands on the most beautiful red snapper and was going to make my quick and simple fish in chunky gravy sauce. So I thought I better share it. So let's start first with some white peppercorns into my grinder. I'm going to add some red pepper flakes for a little kick, followed by some thyme for citrus notes, and a little bit of paprika. This is not smoked, it's just regular. I also add some garlic powder, followed by some onion powder, and some salt. And we're going to just crush this into a powder. And that is all she wrote. Under two minutes, friends, we have a tasty, well-seasoned dry rub. So here is that gorgeous red snapper. Scales are already removed, as you can see, and it's super fresh. Let me show you. The eyes are red and there is no cloudiness going on. So that tells you it's super fresh. It's also been gutted. And when I open the belly like this to show you, it has no smell at all. No fishy smell going on. The flesh is also nice and firm. So when you press on it, it bounces right back. So those are your very important indicators of fresh fish all right so when you go to buy a fresh fish you're looking for the eyes to be nice red shot no cloudiness it must not have any smell if anything it should smell only like the ocean all right briny and also the flesh must be firm so where when you press on it 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 bounces right back all right okay so that is a pro tip from your sister madame why the heck not all right so i've cut them into my preferred sizes which are thick steaks about an inch so you determine how you want them cut. It's all up to you. You can cut them smaller or bigger. Hey, you never know. You might get a smaller piece of fish or a bigger one than I did. All right, the head I removed because I don't need it in this recipe. However, I will use it for my fish stock when that time comes. Now I am dusting the fish with the dry rub and making sure it is well and evenly coated. And your fish must be evenly coated for obvious reasons. I don't even need to say why, right? We want to make sure every bite of this fish tastes good. And now you can do one of two things to allow this fish to marinate and take on the flavor of the dry rub. I placed it in the fridge, that's one option, and I left it uncovered so that it doesn't pull moisture out of the fish. Remember that the dry wrap has salt in it, so it is potentially going to do that. If you leave it at room temperature, which is your next option, only do it for 15 minutes. Now I've removed it from the fridge and allowed it to come back to room temperature just before it goes into the hot oil, and that took about 20 minutes. I am now dusting it with a light coating of all-purpose flour. And see how dry the fish remained just because I also left it uncovered when it went into the fridge. So if you do choose to leave it at room temperature, like I stated earlier, 15 minutes is all it needs because fish really doesn't take that long to marinate. Now, the purpose of the all-purpose flour, wow, that's a tongue twister, determined to twist my tongue. <laughs> Let's talk about that, but prior to that, I just place a very small wedge of onion into the hot oil to perfume it, and in turn, prep the oil for deep frying. So the all-purpose flour will prevent this fish from sticking to the pan when it's deep frying. I move it around a few times, just so that I can start developing that beautiful thin crust on the fish, which the all-purpose flour allows for as well. And that crust will eventually become the receptacle for the sauce. So the sauce doesn't just sit on the fish, but becomes part of the fish's flavor. So there's an actual absorption 
of both flavors, the fish into the sauce and vice versa. When you are creating a recipe that involves more than one component, you must always think of how to ultimately arrive at a unified dish. This is one of the ways that our culinary educators taught us to create unity in the end if our dish involves more than one component, whomever they might be, our parents, our cousins, uncles, our aunties, our friends, our culinary instructors at a culinary institution, just whoever they might be. Now you did notice that I also did not overcrowd the wok that I am deep frying in so that our fish can fry sooner than later. I'm frying the next batch, remove the first. And once they were done frying, I placed them on a paper towel lined platter to absorb any excess oil. We're done with the fish preparation. Now let's move on to the next preparation, which is our chunky vegetable gravy. And for that, we're going to need green and red bell pepper without their seeds and one jalapeno chili also without the seeds. And we're going to use our food processor today to create that chunk. And that looks perfectly chunky to me. I reserved about five tablespoons of some of the oil I fried the fish in and I have placed in it a tablespoon of finely minced garlic as well as some Thai chilies, also minced. I am revitalizing the fragrance in this oil by infusing the two ingredients in there. And the next ingredient is some shallot onions, a whole lot of it. I had eight of the shallot onions that I thinly sliced. The more onions you have in this recipe, the happier you will be. That sweetness is everything in here, all right? Now I add some salt and crushed black pepper and pretty much that's all I used to season this. Because this recipe does not require too much, it's not high maintenance. The fewer the ingredients, the tastier it is, I promise you. And the only way you'll know and testify is by giving this recipe a shot. I hope you do. Now the chunky peppers are going in. I've also cranked up the heat at this point. So I cooked the onions for about two minutes and now the peppers have gone in. Because I've already seasoned with salt, I really don't want the moisture in the peppers to start getting pulled out. So I've cranked the heat up to the highest point. So I'm basically stir frying these ingredients right now. At this point, you can taste, and if you need more salt, please season to your preference because you just included a whole layer of fresh ingredients. So you might need to season some more. So I've just added some more salt, all right? And it tastes perfect now. So the fish pieces are going in and I'm just going to toss everything together to create that marriage we were talking about. We've created unity in this walk and it's ready to serve. It is visually inviting. It tastes scrumptious, very satisfying, delectable, very simple to put together. Everyday ingredients, clean flavors can go wrong with that. And here is that yellow buttery rice. I shared this recipe a while ago and I have linked it below. It's in a video where I also shared uh, four other recipes with rice. So just find it in there and enjoy it. Or watch the entire video. You might learn four other ways to cook your rice. And look at this gravy. Ah, it was good. It was satisfying. My children, my husband, they love this dish. It's so easy to put together. It's quick. It's nourishing, it is satisfying, it's so enjoyable. And there is a little crunch still in the vegetables. 
I mean, who doesn't love some crunch? Just saying. Thanks for watching. Make it a great day and have fun, especially in that kitchen. Thank you, beautiful person, for watching the video all the way to the end. Kindly leave me a comment and subscribe down below. And don't forget to share the video as well. Also, watch more videos. It is chop time. And here in Anabas Kitchen, chop time is always yes friends. So pull up a chair. We are all friends and family here.